Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about something called the floor function. I'm going to define the floor function and then I'm going to do some examples of computing values of the floor function so that you can understand how to do it in an intuitive fashion. You should be able to look at the floor of a number and just give the answer. All right, so let's go through it. So let x be a real number. So x here is a real number. Then we're gonna say the floor of x, so the floor of x denoted just like this, little bracket. Okay, that's gonna be the floor of x is defined as the unique integer n such that we have the following inequality. We have n less than or equal to x less than n plus 1. And so I think when most people see this, they're like, whoa, what is going on? Like, what is, what is the floor function? Um, and so it scares people. Let me write it another way. Basically, if the floor of x is equal to n, this is equivalent to saying that x is less than n plus 1 and greater than or equal to n. So this is a compound inequality. That's why I said n. So x is less than n plus 1 and greater than or equal to n. Reading, I'm reading it backwards. Greater than or equal to n. So that's the floor function. Basically, it... Intuitively, it, it floors the numbers. So for example, let's, let's just jump right to it. Let's look at um, the floor of, let's say, 7.2. What is the floor of 7.2? Okay. Well, in this case, um, you bring it down, right? So this is equal to 7. Right? That would be the answer, right? Just brings it down. And you could look here and you could see that if, if you use this formula, let's use the formula and apply it to this if and only if statement here, 7.2, the floor of 7.2 is 7 is equivalent to saying, what is that equivalent to saying? Well, using, using this, our n here is 7, right? So it's going to be 7 less than or equal to, what's our x? Our x is 7.2 less than, and then what's our n plus 1? Well, n, n is 7, so this is going to be 8. Right? So there we are. So that's, that's how it works. So because this is true, then the floor of 7.2 is going to be 7. If this is true, then this is true. This inequality is true. So this, this means this. They mean the same thing. Um, that's what this symbol means. This, this is called a double implication. So if this is true, this is true. If this is true, this is true. These are called equivalent equivalent statements. Um, let's do another example. So example, what if we had the floor of a fraction? What if, what if we have the floor of, I don't know, um, let's see here, I'm thinking, uh, how about uh, 17 over 2, right? What's the floor of 17 over 2? You might say, well, you can't really, you can't really divide that, right? 17 over 2. Well, 16 over 2 is 8, right? So 17 over 2 is actually 8 and a half, right? So 17 over 2 is 8 and a half using, using these mixed fractions. Remember this from, from school? 2 times 8 is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17. So it's equal to 17 over 2, right? Remember that? That's something you learn sometimes in school. So 8 and a half is 8.5. That's one way to think of it. So this is 8.5, right? And it's, it's the floor function, so you bring it down, right? So this is going to be equal to 8. Always just bring it down, right? Bring it down every single time. Let's do another one. What if what if we had a, a negative number? What's the floor of a negative number? Let's say we have the floor of negative three point two seven nine. Right? What's what's that going to be? Right? So in this case, again, you got to bring it down. It's the floor function. So think of it into just it floors it floors it. So it's going to bring it down to negative four. Boom! There it is. Right. That would be the answer there. So let's do another one. Let's look at the floor of negative 
what's the floor of this going to be, right? I was like, oh, it's going to be negative one. No, no, no. You have to bring it down, right? So it's going to go to negative two. Let's do another one just to make sure you got it. Let's do a couple examples. Let's do a floor of um, 6.8 and the floor of, oh, I don't know, um, negative 2.4. And last but not least, let's do the floor of, oh, I don't know, uh, two. So working these three examples out, let's see. The floor of 6.8, you bring it down, it's going to be 6. Boom. Floor of negative 2.4, bring it down, it's going to be negative 3. Floor of 2 is just 2, and that's it. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Hopefully... Um, this uh, made some sense and hopefully it's helped you. The floor function is something that's studied, by the way, in uh, typically discrete mathematics. If you take a course on discrete math, that's where you would see something like the floor function. And people often get really intimidated by this. Just remember to bring it down. So like 7.2, uh, bring it down. Here we, we you can show the inequality like that. You can apply the inequality to other things, um, like we can apply it here as well, right? You could. You can do the same thing, right? Anyways, I hope it's been helpful. Take care. Keep doing math.